It's bright and breezy on a Sunday morning and today I'm off to see Nick. Always think it's important to start your presentation knowing exactly who you're going out to see. Nick is changing a consumer's unit or has changed a consumer unit yesterday. I got this one at late notice. I'm not exactly sure where we're up to. Either way, I'd expect to see his pre-test results before he changes his consumer's unit. And then we're gonna go through some of the tests after he's changed the consumer's unit. Perhaps I'll be checking to see if he's got the right torque settings on the terminations within the consumer's unit. And everything was um, kosher before obviously the job is notified through his QS or is he notifying it himself through the council? Those are things that I'll find out when I'm on site. Let's go and see Nick on site. So just to get it clear folks, if you're inviting me out in order to do an on-site assessment over the weekend, the minimum requirement for me is a bacon roll and a cup of tea. So we can see I'm being well looked after at this installation. So we can see as they're trying to get the bacon roll to me, which is fantastic news, that we've had a set of pre-test results before changing the consumer's unit. So we tested all the circuits before taking the consumer unit off. Any issues there that we would solve them before changing the consumer's unit. We can see we've got a calibrated test instrument, a long wandering lead, a proven unit, a voltage indicator, a torque screwdriver, etc. So I'm still going to expect to see all the appropriate paperwork for the consumer unit change, even though on this visit we're looking at doing some of the tests and proving that we can carry out the tests and complete the paperwork. So as always, the consumer unit is in a position where you have to be a contortionist to get in to have a look at it. The cable's been in and out a few times as Nick's been practicing his testing, of which he's going to show me during this video presentation. But we've changed the distribution board. It's currently isolated at the main switch. Nick has proved the bottom of the switch is isolated and the top of the switch for supply polarity. So we're going to go on and look at the bonding next. So as always, there's always an issue with the bonding. In this case, the clamp has the safety electrical connection tag missing from it. However, we have confirmed it's within, it's very difficult to see down the bottom here, so I'll get a bit more light on it. We can see the water stop tap down the bottom here, and we are within 600 mil of the water stop tap, and there are no branches in it, in other words, T-pieces. So the clamp's in the right place. Unfortunately, we're gonna replace it because of its condition is not great, and then we're gonna do the test on it. Okay then, Nick, so you've removed the clamps for me. Can you just show us those clamps? Yes, that's the old one there. It's been painted on, it's um, unrecognisable really, it's corroded as well. Okay, and the new one? And, there, and there's the new one, nice shiny, and it has the correct information What's the on information it. on the tag, please? Uh, safety electrical connection, please do not remove. What's the maximum distance that clamp can be away from the water stop tap? Within 600 millimetres. And what size should the protective bonding conductor be for a domestic dwelling? 10 millimetres squared. Where the pipe comes in insulated, Will we be expected to do protective bonding even though the, say, installation is in copper? No. Under the 18th point. edition, well, it was in the 17th as such, but they're going to clarify in the 18th that we won't be doing protective bonding. Would we have to do protective bonding in this installation? Yes, we would. Why? Because we have a metallic pipe entering the building. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Before you remove that protective bonding clamp that was in um, poor condition, what was the distribution board um, like? What would you have done with the distribution board for me, Nick? I'd isolated. Uh, can you disconnect the protective bonding conductor with the supply energised? No. Okay, and we haven't done here, is that the case? That's all right, yeah, in Brilliant. case we have a fault to earth. Brilliant, okay, that we have to have the supply uh, disconnected. Are you going to do anything to the pipe work before putting the new clamp on? I am, yeah, I'm going to um, clean the copper up getting a real good connection there with the new clamp and the relevant information on, so that anyone looking at it will be aware that it's for electrical purposes okay brilliant thank you let's do that next so nick has cleaned up both the pipe so we're back to bright copper as well as the cable itself there's no point having all that corrosion and stroke paint all around the actual pipe itself. We want the best possible electrical connection before we put our clamp on. So Nick's replaced the clamp now so we can clearly see safety electrical connection do not remove. It's secured against the copper pipe and we're now gonna measure the resistance of the protective bonding conductor for this and the gas. So what we've got here is the long lead is not required. We're in the room with the consumer's unit. So we've got the green lead from the Omega MFT going up to the disconnected protective bonding conductor for the water and hopefully Nick's going to prove now that this reading is below what value again, Nick? I can't remember. 0 0.05. Let's see what it is then. Okay. On the actual clamp. Clamp itself, we've got 0 0.02. Where else would I expect it to be tested to? And we're going to test the pipe to make sure we're actually connected. Brilliant. So it goes through the clamp and onto the pipe. We've yeah. got 0 0.02. You happy with that reading? I am, yeah. Shall we do the gas next? Yep. Yeah. 
So we've moved over to the gas now. We've had to remove the long wandering leads resistance before doing the test. So the long wandering leads connected at the protective bonding conductor in the consumer's unit. And we're now down at the gas meter itself. Reading again, maximum again for me, Nick. 0 0.05 ohms. Okay, let's see what we get this time now at the gas. Okay. On the clamp itself, we get... 0 0.03. Good, and on the pipe work? Did we have any issues on the pipe work before we started the camera rolling? We did, we were getting a higher resistance because we had some corrosion and some pack combination of both on the pipe. So we've loosened the cable, the clamp off, lifted it up a bit, brightened all the pipe work up, put it back down, and we're getting within a, it's just stopping us getting a, the value we were looking for. Brilliant, Nick. We can see 0 0.03. Thank you. So this video presentation didn't work out exactly as I thought it would at the start of the video presentation. Nick wanted me to come and see some of his tests. A lot of those tests I've already shown on the channel um, during Marcus's and Jack's video. So I'll concentrate on showing you this time the protective bonding conductor test as pretty much the, the bulk of the visit along with obviously explaining the paperwork etc. We've got a choice now. We're either going to notify the job through your QS or we're going to notify it through the local authorities or you're going to use it as your notifiable job. Is that correct for yeah, NRC or right. NAPIT? Yep. Did you think the tests were beneficial where we're going next, which is our OCU? Yeah, I did. Uh, it was good to go through all the tests and uh, in preparation for my OCU in the next few weeks. So as you're looking out from afar, my learners especially, remembering we've got to do a consumer unit change as part of our course and that is a notifiable work and we've got to choose the correct process in order to notify this job. We hope this video has, has been, been some help. help.